Hi, I'm Omni Sunday. Dinosaurs are my favorite group of animals, and birds are my favorite within them. The line between birds and dinosaurs is already pretty blurry, so let's blur it more. Birds are a group of theropod dinosaurs specifically, which tend to be bipedal. Birds obviously keep this trend, but what if they didn't? What if ground-dwelling birds use their forelegs to support larger weights? Let's say this all happened somewhat recently, in the perspective of natural history, to several bird species at the same time due to some odd occurrence. The biggest structural difference between birds and other theropods is their tail. The short, stiff tail of birds is great for flight, but not so much for balancing a large head and neck. This might be the biggest problem for large quadrupedal birds, but an upside of bird structure to consider before drawing anything is that they have a large sternum for their huge chest muscles. We'll take advantage of this and give them disproportionately strong and large arms. I'll call them drakes, but try to think of that as in dragons, not the Canadian guy. The first drake I'll describe is one that resembles a certain kind of duck. They'll keep their S-shaped neck and the males will have some display structures on their head. They'll have slightly longer tails than your average bird and of course, four legs. Here's the final art. The adult is well known for its high contrast coat and bright red coloring. It doesn't need camouflage as it's a herbivore that has no problem defending itself. However, the chicks are dappled yellow and brown to hide in piles of dead leaves. The chicks are much smaller than the adults, but they grow quickly. These animals fill the niche of horses or zebras, but are just as untamable as the latter. A much friendlier drake is a domestic pet known as the lovebird. It's only about 15 centimeters long from beak to tail, but otherwise has a similar body shape as the last one. It'll have much shorter legs to keep body heat. Think of it like a mouse or a hamster, except it's a bird. Here's the final art. These lovely pets come in all sorts of colors and patterns, and are loved by parents for how easily cared for they are. They need quite a bit of attention, but will eat just about anything. Unlike hamsters, they can jump and climb as they originally evolved to live in trees. These drakes rarely weigh more than 50 grams, but their beaks can exert quite a bit of force. The last drake we'll explore is one that has re-evolved a bipedal stance. However, instead of flying, this animal stands upright to run quickly through the savanna and attack with its deadly claws. It took me a few tries to get right. I know this one's kind of giving Pokemon, so I gave it the fitting name of Rubalt, and really dug my heels in by calling the babies Chickascritch. They're not Pokemon, and there's no metamorphosis. I'm just admitting that they give the vibe. Anyway, here's the final art. High levels of Cobalt have been found in the claws of this drake, which is most obvious in the blue color found in chicks. However, by the time they're adults, the Cobalt combines with Tungsten Carbide found in their environment to make a wear-resistant natural alloy. Their environment is abnormally rich with these metals and compounds, so other animals they live with have similar adaptations. Anyway, the adults are territorial and extremely aggressive, but also a delicacy in local cuisine. To successfully hunt an adult is somewhat of a milestone, because of the danger and difficulty. They're not particularly large or heavy, but those claws seem to cut through anything. It's one of the most intelligent drakes, and locals are beginning to worry that their village will be attacked by swarms of rubal. Is this a problem they created, or just nature being nature? That's about it. My next Back Evo video will be exploring the idea of sapient predators that hunt sapient prey. Hope to see you there, and thanks for watching!